to this live event. So my name is Manuel. I'm from the CLO Europe team based here in Munich. And today I'm going to sit together with Jimmy from Atakak, and he's based in Gothenburg, Sweden. We initially had a workshop planned in March, but that got cancelled then due to the yeah, COVID situation. And now we have this as a replacement where we're going to learn not the software itself, but we're going to learn about Atakak, uh, the company, and so to say the methods behind. Um, yeah, just before we start, um, you have the chat window on the right. So during the first 30 minutes, Jimmy will go through a presentation. I will ask questions during the presentation to dive a bit deeper into some subjects. And you can ask your questions in the chat. We will collect them. And after the presentation, we then have Georgia, my colleague, uh, who, who will direct the questions to Jimmy. And we can feel free to ask all the questions. Um, regarding Atakak and the software. Um, during the presentations, we will also have a few polls. Um, once you see a poll, you simply click on the answer uh, you think is most fitting for you. And the good thing is we will see the result live directly afterwards. So it's also a nice overview to see, so to say, who joins this call and uh, their background and opinions. And also one more thing, this uh, session will be recorded and we will afterwards publish it on the CLO YouTube channel. So you always have the possibility to rewatch it or share it with team members or uh, other people who think uh, find this interesting. So then, Jimmy, I will hand it over to you. And I would like to ask you to introduce us to Atakak and uh, then show us a bit like what's at the core of their business model. Thank you so much. Can you hear me well? Yes. Good. Well, welcome everyone. So I'm Jimmy. I'm a creative director working with the digital communication on Atacac. And Atacac is a fashion studio. We're making clothes in a slightly different way. So for us, we like we're aiming for some kind of like total creative freedom when making clothes. We want to maximize sustainability in our process. And we want to have like a solid economic model that always works. And we are about 10 people. And those 10 people handle the whole chain from design to present to sell and produce our garments so we do everything with just 10 people and on top of that we also helping other brands to like uh, adapt to the future and the digitalization we share all our patterns we do for free download we sell our garments virtually in virtual reality and we have our like disruptive business model that is uh, we changed like the way from the traditional way. So that's like Atakak. And right now I'm in our studio in Gothenburg, Ringjörn, Sweden, uh, sitting in our small forest. I think I can show you a little bit how it looks here. So. It's uh, like 800 square meters. And up here we have our studio together with freelancers, all kinds of freelancers, photographers, filmmakers, musicians, and so on. Down here we have our film and photo studio. So we do some analog shooting as well. And here we have our micro factory where we produce everything. So we have like everything in one place actually so uh, that's what we think is a good way of working uh, so I will see if I can show you some slides here let's see so should I start I can just like briefly tell you a little bit about our business model, how we do things differently from everyone else, and uh, what we think is the benefits of that. 
So this is like the traditional process. This is how most companies do it. It's a pretty long process taking months, years to do something like uh, this from design to the end consumer. What we did when we started five years ago, we took this model and looked into how we could change it. So starting with design and then we turned into design in 3D instead. So we design everything in 3D. We do it in combination within the with the analog world, but uh, the end product is a 3D garment. And then we present it and we present it in 3D as well. So we actually don't need any physical garments to sell anything. And then we skip retailers and stores. So we sell directly to end consumer. And we sell the garments before we produce it. So in that way, we don't need to overproduce anything and we don't need to have things in stock. And we don't need to have any money to make clothes because we get the money before we produce it. And in the end, we then produce it. So this takes roughly one month. It's depending on yeah, how you plan things. But uh, this is uh, the basics of our model. What do you think, Manuel? <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, now you're know. back. Yes. Uh, that sounds good. Um, and what part of this uh, journey is currently taking the most resources? Uh, it's pretty even. Let's see, I can go to the next slide here. This is what we do in w each stage. So uh, I think it's pretty even. For the last collection, we put a little bit more effort into the present part of it. But uh, it's like... Uh, I think I can say it's uh, pretty even in the design phase, the present uh, phase. Then the, the design phase could be depending on what we do. Now we did a collection with nine pieces. It took like two, three months uh, because we put it a little bit over time. The presentation part to make all content took like a month for that. And now we're selling over uh nine weeks then we release one garment every week and then we produce things and it takes like three weeks to do that so but it's I mean, and we do this on 10 people so it's uh it's like we're tra trying now to like streamline everything to do it super streamlined to get because we need we need to be effective to be able to produce in sweden because it's expensive to produce in sweden so we need to like gain things in all the other stages. Uh, then uh, this will be the first phone that I would like to ask you to the public. So you ready? And uh, you have a bad sound, think... Manuel. Sorry. Yeah, yes. that's better. I think I just also use the close of the process. I would ask the audience what benefits have you experienced with the phone software? I'm sorry, I can't hear you so good. Uh, is it better now? Is it possible to hear A little bit. Okay, question is to. I will take off this. Try without. Try with... Okay, it's better Always to hear me now. Good. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it look better. This will be the uh, <laughs> first part. Thank you very much. Uh, the first part where I would like to ask a poll to the public, uh, and um, would be what benefits have you experienced with when working with Chloe? Good. And the poll is to the right or something. Yeah. Yes, the poll is coming up to mm -hmm. the right, and then please feel free to share your answers. Oh, interesting. Speed is going up. Mm, communication is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. 
Yes. And, Should... and also other. That's always an interesting one. What is other? <laughs> Should we talk, continue to talk about something? Yes, uh, maybe let's go through, like, the poll will be closed then. Uh, what other software and tech tools are you using in the process? Uh, on this slide, we can see the design phase. We're basically working with Clo for, like, design it, digitize all the fabrics, doing the tech packs. We're using, like, Adobe to uh, work with everything around images. For the presentation, we render the most product images in Clo. So we do the most things there. We simulate all garments and animations in Clo. Then we're using blenders for some renderings when we animate. For our online store and presentation and so on, we're actually just doing everything in HTML, CSS. Um, and then we have a lot of like subscriptions on, like Shopify for the e-commerce. We have MailChimp for the newsletters and so on. I think it's what's what I think is really cool is that you can just subscribe on like five or ten services and you can ha carry out everything like from the design to the final product and it's, it doesn't cost so much I think put up, put up an online store and everything we pay like a couple of hundred euros a month like for the subscriptions for everything to get things running yeah and as you see here for production, we're using scissors for cutting. We have some sewing machines as well for manufacturing. It's really good stuff. <laughs> yes, you want to make the investment to set up the whole production line for your range of garments. So that is everything in place. Yeah. Great. All right. What's next? Should I just continue here? I have some tech stuff yes. for you as well. This is our uh, computers. Uh, we actually have like two PC workstations with which we render and simulate a lot of things on. We have some IMAX as well for daily design work. And then we have like our own small render park with three rendering computers. It's basically NVIDIA cards in them, which doing the work. So it's a pretty easy setup. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we render the mostly things here internally. Excellent. Yeah. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, like in the last release, you've been all working uh, in a collection. Mm. Uh, could you walk us through the pro uh, process of how the development of the collection yeah. went? Let's see. So we released this a month ago and this is just what I told you basically, but we made a theme for this uh, collection. And from that team, we designed those nine pieces. And then we like digitized everything and had a 3D product. And how we work here, then we, we're doing the tech packs going to the factory and then the 3D products going into the communication. So then we create all the content, all the communication and then we start to sell it. We have our customer service. Um, and every week we release a garment. And then two weeks later, we collect the orders, send it to production. They produce it and we ship it. And I have, um, here's an example of the content we produce then. So from the design, we get the 3D products. and. For instance, we did this still life images to like hint about the product. And uh, so we simulated this in Clue and uh, brought in like different shares that we banded a little bit. And then we simulated it in Clue, putting those garments on here. We uh, rendered all the products here in Clue as well. We this is the store, so as you can see up in the left corner on the images, it's like a counter telling when we drop the next garment. You can see for garments that's open for pre order, you can see when it goes into production. 
and so you can follow the process and you can like buy stuff during uh, when when we open it up or if we if it's on like uh, before we released it for pre-order then you can sign up on a waiting list we release the whole collection so you can buy all nine pieces uh, as a capsule collection and then you get like a virtual fitting we contact you and go through that um, and we also shared all the patents like this or are we going to share it it's uh starts next week i think so uh, we also did an uh an extra shareware uh a face face um, face mask reusable which you can wash we released everything in sansar uh which is a virtual reality platform so you can uh buy it in Sunser and bear, wear it virtually. And we use all this content in social media, website and so on to communicate. And here's a little bit the summary of the assets. We can quickly uh, shoot the question like, and how is the, the reaction from the people who see the virtual garments uh, and maybe still are used to having real garments? Is there, is there any feedback that you get? Or do you mean between like renderings and real garment yes. when we started five years ago we just did renderings as sold things on renderings and actually that worked really well and we have very few complaints about you don't get what you see uh, but for this collection we actually then it's the, the first time we do so much photography, analog stuff. So we want to just to see, try to mix. So it's like a 50-50 now. So we actually show some garments in the, on photos and we do some 3D renderings. But uh, for me, still, still images of uh, rendered garments, it works perfectly. I did it three years ago when we opened our online store. We have people right. coming in and saying like, I heard you render everything in 3D, but I can't find those images on your website. So, but, and then like okay. everything is in 3D. So, uh -huh. so it really right. works. And um, now you showed a, like you showed a few examples of like how you could use the, the software and like what you use it for. And uh, this was the, like the next poll that we would like to ask the audience. Uh, why are you using Clo or what's so to say, what's, the, um, yeah, the purpose why you try to use the software. All right, so far it seems like on the marketing side, you know, <laughs> not too many. <laughs> Production. Hmm. Okay, but design and pattern making seems to be mm. the strongest fields here. Yeah. Okay, great. And um, yes, and now you have a slide on, like how do you use the results you've created? Like maybe walk us just through this process and um, yeah, what do you want to share with this slide? Sorry, this one we're looking at. Yes. No, it's just, uh, I think uh, it's interesting to see how you can combine things. Like this, actually, we produce like all communication in like two to four weeks. And it's, I think it's very powerful to have the possibility to do, to, to combine like 3D and what the traditional way of doing things. It really works in so many good ways. And it's like open up, it uh, gives you a really creative freedom as well. That's basically what we started out with was like, we want to have creative freedom when we create. So, and we really get that when we're doing this. Yeah, and uh, and um, when you talk about the starting point and um, also how you start with the designs, I, I so you have a partner in this. It's Rikat, and he also has a like a, a very unique design approach and based on like a pattern making yeah. uh, method. Um, maybe they just walk us through yeah. the process, through the design process. Yeah. So this is Rikat Linkvist, our fashion designer, and he has like his own design method. And if we 
if the, this is like the traditional way of making patterns, which is pretty flat way of doing things. And uh, this is the red lines here is Langer's lines used in surgery, how to cut up people. <laughs> but uh, they really explain how the skin stretches when you move. So it stretches in between those lines. And so this is a really good uh, model on actually how, when you move your body, where does things stretch? So if you look at the traditional way, so you have, here you have like the traditional matrix on top of that. It actually doesn't suit it so well. So uh, Rickard, he made like an own model where you like wrap the body into a fabric instead. And this, uh, this is like two different ways of thinking about designing. So we have like very different starting point from the traditional way of doing things. And here is like two results. So to the left is a traditional way. To the right is when you wrap the body into this. Um, I have a video I can show for this as well. But here's also how, here you can see how the patterns ending up when we're doing this. Sometimes it's just one big piece. Sometimes we slice it down to several pieces as well. I think also this picture shows really well how we work when we design that. We work in the analog world uh, because it's important to try things and see how it feels. Then we have this in the center here, the TV screen, which is just a big TV uh, in portrait mode. So we can actually in -clow see our garments in scale one to one almost. So that's a really good representation on how how to work with it in the digital world. And to the right, we just work in clothes and with the patterns and so on. But for us, it's a lot of mixing like virtual world and the real world and working in both and use the benefits from both of those worlds. Um, are we using uh, the fabric kit to digitize uh, the fabrics? It's important to get the right uh, properties for the fabrics. We're using the tech packs going down to our production here, but also when we design for external clients, we use it for when they send it to their factories. So, and I think this is getting better and better and to have everything in a few softwares and that really makes the process very streamlined to work in that. Yes, and, yes, and I can see on the top left, it's created through the Closet platform. This means you also use Closet and upload the garments in this cloud-based service yeah. by Clow and yeah. then extract this, um, yeah, these tech packs for your project. Yes, and we are actually, yeah, we're using Closet as well for our clients so they can look at it directly. Uh, yeah, Interesting. so they can see it in 3D and so on. So, and, yeah, when you when you work with client, I can imagine that also one part of the whole process is then also like examining the fit of a garment and working yeah. on that. Um, yeah, what what uh, what is your method currently with uh, like conducting virtual fittings? Uh, for the latest collection, we let's see if I have a slide here. Yes, I have. <laughs> we trying now out virtual fitting for our end consumers which I think is, uh, it's interesting. We evalu evaluate this and see if it will work. So we have Hannah here, who is when you order, this is when you order the capsule collection, then she contacts you, she book a meeting, and you have a one hour meeting discussing what your style and what you like, taking measurements and so on. And from that, we uh, then, actually doing renderings on your body measurements and dress you and show you what do you think what what size do you want to have so we are in the process now so we, but we will see when we're done if it works well and for the next season if this t turns out well we will also see if we can work with customize the patterns for each uh, consumer then. 
so we can we don't we like leaving to have sizes and going into maybe customize that that's something we really would like to do Right. And have you also experimented with, uh, so to say, scanning faces of avatars or like, so to say, body scans and textures? Yeah, we have done that as well. Should I show you a video? Yeah, feel free to share a video. I have some prepared here. Let's see. I can have one. We did like an animated movie just to try out and see what you can do. Let's see. Starting it up here. I turn off the sound, I think. I maybe give you a slight, a little bit of sound. <laughs> I maybe as well go into it a little bit here. Uh, so let's see. Can you hear me on top of the music? So we actually, here yes. we uh, 3D scanned our intern Mickey and uh, we also 3D scanned Amandine, our pattern constructor and we made avatars of them Oops. and then we dressed them we took animations from Mixamo and we made this movie where they are dancing together So. But what I think is interesting is that if you have all your whole collection digitally, you can actually just email it to any 3D studio working with animated movies, if you're doing games, and I think uh, in the film industry for like extras and so on, we become in 3D as well over time. So yeah, I think it's a, uh, and also we, we did leave this on like a uh, like home computer. So you don't need to have like super computers to do this. We did it on one computer. It took three months to render, but uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's nice to see an example of, um, yeah, so to say how presentation virtually can also be and can be animated. Um, I think you had a bit more to share about like the benefits of uh, um, presenting virtually in general. Yeah. So maybe if go back to the presentation. Yes. I'm looking for it. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I just show you a little bit of renderings and stuff, but this is actually our first render we did. It was, I don't know, three, four or five years ago. Uh, the one to the left was, we were like, can we render a garment in 3D and have it look realistic? Why do it do it? No one do that. And we took this photo to the right. It's a Rickard in the photo to the right, tries to get this on, but gets stuck with his head in the somewhere. But uh, from there, we then just rendered everything and sold it in on our online store. So, to it, it's uh, some kind of freedom that you don't need to go into a physical studio and set up lighting and everything that you actually just you design something and then you just render it and you see what you see how it looks and everything and you can actually put it up on the online store and sell it and uh, I think for the first ones I showed here it was just the garments which uh, I think that works perfectly we're trying with avatars as well. So this is something we did last fall. I have some images here when we tried out. I tried to learn how to do hair. And this was like part of the process. It's, uh, we, are, we are not like a 3D studio here. We are basically, it's me and one more doing 3D. So we'd like, we learn over time here to do things. So you can do things in really good ways. But we really tried things and it, it doesn't always ending up so good, but uh, it's, I, in the same time, it's such a creative freedom to be able to do whatever. But uh, yeah, that's fun way of working. This is- But if I can, uh, maybe I can quickly ask like, how do you see, especially with the social media platform, like to use all this creative freedom that you, you were talking mm -hmm. about, um, how does this 
so to say, benefit your way of working and how is the response to that? When we started out, we were like, let's do everything in 3D and let's keep to take any photos of what we do. But that's that's a big challenge because things doesn't look good all the time. It's really difficult to get an, a relaxed avatar to feel good and to sell sell garments on stiff avatars is difficult because people want to see how it looks on you, on your body, how it looks on me. So, but I think I, I really like that approach, try to do it all the way and see what happens. So, but I, I think there are now when we combine things, I really like that direction. But I think we will still continue to do things that doesn't look really good all the time. It's because we just, sometimes you find something that really works, but many times it doesn't work at all. So. I, I see. Um, yeah. My next question would be like, if you have your virtual mm -hmm. product, you also want to end up at a physical product. Sorry. Uh, you disappeared. Okay. We wait for Manuel. But this picture we see here, it's just how you can add, like, if you add the arms here, is real ones. So, uh, then you can almost fake anything. You can get like the, you can get a very realistic style today, which I think is really good. Okay, I might continue, Manuel. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll <laughs> jump in for Manuel now. Thank you. Hi. Um, so yeah, I wanted to discuss um, your manufacturing. How, how do you do it? How does it work? What's your process behind creating your actual garments and the whole manufacturing? Yeah. I can tell you a bit. It. So we have our own micro factory here in Sweden. And uh, I showed you a little bit before. This is how it looks. It's uh, like 20, 25 machines. We have uh, two employees working, uh, immigrants from Aleppo. Um, I think it's, it's, it's like a challenge to have production in Sweden because we have pretty high salaries. So it's like twice expensive to do things here in the rest of Europe. And it's like 20 times more expensive if you could look outside of Europe. So, but we, we believe that this is possible to do. And we want like, every, we want everyone's value as if you work with, producing clothes you should have the same rights as like designing and everything else so that's we we think we want to have the right salaries and pay everyone in our process so we know that we're doing things right that's important for us hey manuel hey, sorry i was cut out for nice a moment problem. Uh, didn't know what happened um yes in this in the process from going to from virtual to the factory, mm -hmm. I will, so they, we have another poll prepared oh. for this. And which communication platform do you currently use to share your 3D garments and renders? So to say, for the that the audience can um, answer this. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's a really even here. Other is doing good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mm, closet. Yeah. And in this regard, also thank you everyone for participating so actively. That's uh, a to get an overview. And uh, yeah, interesting results. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Okay. Uh, we also see that the digitalization actually can benefit the craftsmanship. So. If we digitize everything else in the process, we can really keep on uh, like work with craftsmanship in really good ways. So for us, that's super important. It's difficult to like automate and having robots making garments today. So we see this as the perfect match. And when the, all these immigrants coming to Sweden, they actually have the knowledge about how to make garments. 
which we don't have in Sweden actually, because uh, it was a long time ago we had that kind of manufacturing in Sweden. So to keep like manufacturing machines knowledge in the country, I think that's valuable to have that. And but uh, one thing is speed. I mean, to have the production here is so great. If you design something virtually in the morning, we can have a final garment like in the evening. So the same day we can actually go from virtual to physical garment. And that speed is like so great. So it saves us so much time. So that's the great things. Should we, we are a little bit late now, Manuel, or? Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, <laughs> Should we? Just share what you know, about, uh, what you want to share about the shareware section. Well, uh, I can go briefly uh, um, through it. It's we share almost all everything we release we share, so you can download it for free. Uh, if you want to, you can donate, but it's uh, basically for free. And what you get is a zip file. You get the clue file, the DXF, a PDF. You can print it in two D. You can manipulate it in three D. You can adapt it for your body, and then you can make it your own. It's a uh, Creative Commons license, so you can sell it if you want to. You can do whatever, as long as you just uh, credit Atacac for it and that you continue to share it as well. So it's so it needs to be an open like process. So keep on sharing everything you do. And this is, uh, yeah, it's uh, working really well. We had uh, 13,000 downloads until today i think it's pretty good so it's starting to get being like a community the whole share thing that's super fun great and yeah maybe as, as we want to keep a bit of time also for the questions afterwards maybe we can quickly jump to the to the pricing model that you can yeah. quickly inform you inform us about the what's different so to say i just jump through answer. some stuff here We... I think what you just showed me was the, like, the ones are and like how do you wear it much. Yes, <laughs> very quickly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and here's our price model, or this is the traditional price model. When we started our online store, we thought like how everyone else is selling things it really doesn't work. You sell it for like full price, and then over time, you like reduce the value of the garment until it's worth zero. And then you try to give it away, and if it doesn't work, then you um, uh, have to burn it in the end. So we try to do this like upside down. So with our pre-order model, when you pre-order it, it helps us a lot because we know how many to produce. We don't have overproduction and uh, stock holding, so we save money on it. So then we can give a better price. So then we actually then can reduce our price when you pre-order. And then if we get returns or uh, so on, if we have anything in stock in the end, you can buy it, but then we actually increase the price for it. So it's, uh, I think it's a really good model. You, I think it's important to keep the value of what you do. You should do garments that people love and want to wear, and they should be more valuable over time. So, because that's the most sustainable way of working with clothes. So that's it. Yes. Thank you very much, Jimmy. I just saw in the chat that there's a few people asking, show us the VR stuff. Maybe we can quickly <laughs> go back to them. Okay. Um, in slide, talk about it. And after that, we will hand it back. Uh, I will hand it over to Georgia, and she will then direct the questions that she's collected from the chat to you. Okay. Uh, um, thank you very much for the presentation. I do this super quick then, or but yeah. I think let's see. I'm getting right here. No, uh, I mean today a lot of people buying clothes in games already by buying skins. So that's like a super big market already. But I think that the fashion industry missed missed it a little bit. So uh, we really want to like merge fashion with gaming 
And this is like, if you look at the catwalks and hot couture today, it's like perfect for gaming industry because you don't want to have like a white t-shirt and blue jeans in a game. You want to be like express yourself in a really great way. So uh, I think it's perfect to, if you want to create freedom, you should uh, design things for gaming. And if you have it in Clue, you can actually, you can actually send your garment to any gaming studio almost, and they can. It's it's like a good format to add clothes to gaming. So, and we're using also Sansar, which is a virtual reality platform, where you having events and stuff. We had uh, uh, an event. Let's see, I have it somewhere here. We had a Pride event last year when it was Pride. We did this uh, body stocking. So we did a physical garment where you could dress uh, in these Pride colors. And then we do it, did it virtually in uh, Sunstar as well. I had an event with DJs and it was like 50 people coming there and you were dancing and so on together. So it's, it's a super fun world to be in, I believe. So, and then we just, you actually upload things. I think you need to go through Marvelous Designer still, but uh, from there, you just dress and sensor avatar, and then you upload it, and then you sell it in uh, their store. So, and we had uh, 1,300 downloads today, 1,600. So, it's not so big yet, but actually people using it. So, it's uh, super fun. Yes, I have some videos, but maybe we should cut it here or? Yeah, let's, um, I think we should maybe open up some questions because we've got quite a lot. Um, but just before we start going into the Q&A part, um, it would actually be really interesting to see, for everyone to see what communities everyone comes from, which Clo community. So I'm just going to quickly um, share a poll here. And then um, everyone can actually see what community um, these questions are coming from. So it'll be really interesting to get to know where the director is from. And then we can start off with some questions. So Sorry, I, uh, got I'm bringing in Richard here. If, if can, if can yeah, sure, bring him in. Yeah, I yeah. tried to take off my headset as well and see if sound works as well. Of course. Yeah. Can you hear me well? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Good. He's on his way. Let's see. Oh, we should put this. He's up somewhere. He's hiding. Left, left on the parrot. Yeah. <laughs> so we're quite even between enterprise and individual. Individual just taking over a little bit. So it's interesting to see. Super small. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Here it comes. Yeah. We might get some questions. Hey, welcome. Uh, <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, good, good. I'm okay, so. Um, Maybe we can get started with some questions from the audience. So we can, we'll can we have a mix between Clo and Atticat questions, and then I'm sure we can both jump in either way. So one of the first questions that people are asking quite a lot is, where are you getting your avatars from? We Are they Clo avatars? Are you getting them online from another platform? We use uh, the Clo avatars to most things, like uh, virtual mm -hmm. painting, designing, if you want. We doing between three discounts sometimes. What is? We think uh, we have downloaded some as well, but uh, we also like three discount at the torso. We cut it on top of the uh, clo avatar, <laughs> which okay. is cool. adding the mesh and so on. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, and we've been making some, testing some different things in. in Projects we we use the Mixamo tool yeah. to 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 create and customize avatars, but yeah, mainly for avatars. 
and it's been using like one from the first version of or something with strange hair. Everything is just like on the ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my card. Okay. Okay. Um, another interesting. <laughs> you did like you yeah. see some like things on top of the ears. So things were too much. Guys, some people are having issues um, understanding you. Could you speak a bit louder into the mic? Oh, hold on. We're now where we, yeah. We're... Yeah, maybe come a bit closer and then people can hear you a bit better. Um, say something? Is this better? I think it's better. Is it better for everyone else watching? Hello. Yeah, okay, great. Um, cool. Um, so another question that people have asked a lot, um, do you think your business model would adapt to other types of fashion companies, for example, knitwear? or embroidery do you think it's plausible to use that business model yes definitely and i'm sure that we will see maybe not exactly the same setup as we do but variations of different new business models applied in in various parts of the industries various fields so that, i mean it just makes sense to trust to 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 go into new business models when the technology allows. Now yeah. this COVID nineteen period, uh, I think it's a proof that it works much better than the traditional one. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I guess um, this is a question actually for I think everyone. So even us clothes designers, um, what do you think is the most important function to get the garment to look real? So how do, how do you create those sort of photorealistic um, visuals from your renders? In the beginning, we had like bad scannings. <laughs> <laughs> Very imperfect scanning. So we were, that's really good. Like, but otherwise, no, we, we work. Uh, I, I come in from a world where I'm working analog in studio. So I think if you have the uh, knowledge of work traditionally, it helps you a lot with live things like that. Yeah, because I would say the same as well. I find that, um, especially in the render window, the lighting plays a big effect, a big part, actually, in creating that sort of photorealistic garment. The same way it would do in real life sort of thing. Um, you go to a photo studio, you play around with your lighting to give the most optimum visual that you want. And then, obviously, people Photoshop after. But the good thing about Chloe is that you kind of don't need to do that. You can kind of render it and get that result finished in that one software, which is great. Um, so yeah, I think it worked. So did you want to add something? I believe we have had a good starting point with that. As it's, you, as you mentioned, image that you historically has used what with a, in a photo studio settings, the film studio settings, and then I have on the other hand worked a lot with you know, physical garments and, and, and tailoring and making of, of physical garments. So I guess we both uh, we we have a long experience of making the I think things in, in, in real life and then it of course that helps a lot with creating digital sequences. Okay. I think also the details of adding all the details in the 3D uh, product and working with the styling and everything that's so important to like get the avatar relaxed, get the every all the details <laughs> in and really like think about how you style things so yeah definitely i think it plays a, a big effect on creating that real life That's feeling true. um that you want to I mean, achieve so many um, small steps so it's, i guess it's hard to say which one is if if, if one specific if is more important for the general feeling all together uh, yeah yeah probably all of them play a big important factor definitely um, which actually brings on to, because um, you're just talking about pattern cutting and as a pattern maker, um, one of the question here, one of the questions that we've had is based on actual fitting and how that um, works as you being a pattern maker, how do you create, um, how do you find the difference between real life um, fitting and fitting on the avatar? Like, as, how do you think it, um, how do they compare really? Um, yeah, I, I guess the, the answer for that will be dependent on what is put in in the in the uh, 
uh, how do you find how, how you define a fitting that is good for a mm -hmm. good fit like size wise or feeling wise then we still always do that physically uh, in, in a development phase uh, if it's fitting from the sense of seeing visual effects or maybe proportions of details or uh, uh, stuff then then we definitely use clo uh, as a tool for that uh, but i never really had an interest of of not fitting or going away from fitting things physically um, okay because the part so the both. kind of a pattern experimental pattern making we do is so uh, connected to the physical body so it, um, we have done comparisons between we've done like a virtual fit and a physical one and compare them uh, they slightly mm -hmm. different sometimes but i think also it's about how you digitize the fabric is important then because it's how much like stretching yeah. so i think it's good to consider how you digitize the fabric and see if it really relates to the real one yes and, and then if, if you look at fit as for example i don't know the length of coat or a length of a sleeve uh, then yes we, we do use the 3d uh, or the close close solution for that when it comes to fit as more of a on a more complex level of moving around in the garment then we uh, always rely on physical samples then we also i mean we the 3d visualization is a fantastic tool for us but then on the other hand we also have our in-house manufacturing here which makes making physical samples very quick and fast for us for us also which of course is always the case for a lot of a lot of businesses so. okay cool thanks for explaining um so i think we have time maybe for just for one more question so i'm going to try and pick a good one here um let me see what have people been asking a lot about um a lot of people have actually been asking about your um digitizing your fabrics and your trims um what sort of process do you use how do you go about getting your fabrics digitized and your trims i guess as well you see your uh fabric kit? emulator oh okay <laughs> that's good to know only our emulator great <laughs> and do you find the results very accurate with that compared to real life or yes our experience is that that works fine and then we i mean in, in a lot of cases we use the i mean i don't know prefabricated clothes uh, yeah. in there and then we we scan the i mean the textures obviously we scan them in uh, normal normal scanner yes and nothing nothing fancy and then we use this photoshop plugin what it's called i don't remember uh, <laughs> uh, we, 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 we can look that up it's chris christian who handles that he's not in today but maybe you know the the name of this uh, plugin which automatically uh, makes repetitions and creates um, we do it pretty uh, manually in photoshop actually repetition sorry i don't I actually don't know which um, plugin that you're referring to i'm trying to think now report, uh, but it also creates pictures. different different maps the the yeah, maps you can create all your your normal oh, maps and your displacement yeah. maps yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And you find that that gives you the sort of result that you're looking for, which we, uh, is really so far, good. Yeah. Really good. So far. Are we doing we're doing some stuff in Clo when we render, and then I think mm -hmm. the way Clo handles normal maps and everything works really well. So, but then we have sometimes we have a little bit of a glitch when we're going from like Clo to Blender. So then we try to get everything right in close so we can just import it into blender and render it are we pretty close to that but we're doing some tweaks in blender as well okay great um, people have actually answered for us so it's pick supply yeah. so yeah is that the one that you're using yeah <laughs> thanks everyone <laughs> 
that's always helpful. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much. And everyone, thanks for your questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get through all of them. There was quite a lot of questions that came through, but I can see that people have been assisting each other and asking questions as we've gone along, which okay. is great. Um, and just to, um, I guess, just to finish, uh, I'm just going to quickly send through a handout which has all our um, all our contact information. So if anyone wants to um, contact Africa after or anyone from CLO, um, you can um, take this um, handout and it's got all our details and information there. So I think you guys should have it now. Um, you can just download that and get in contact with all of us here, which is really good. And again, if you have any feedback about um, the, um, the webinar, um, I'll leave the chat on for a couple of minutes after as well, and you guys can just um, share your thoughts and if, what you guys would like to see next time potentially would be really good to hear about that. And um, I guess for us, it's just a massive thank you to Atacat as well, because honestly, you guys, like, you're basically the dream of what we what we do here as well. Like, you take everything and you make it, you bring in 3D to every part of your process, which is just incredible to see the results and the level of quality and finish that you guys produce is insane. So thank you very much for being part of this today. Thank you so much. Love it. Yeah. Have a yeah. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and to everyone watching, this will be available on our YouTube channel after. Atacat will also probably have it on their channel as well. We'll share it. Um, and everyone just keep safe and healthy during this period. And thanks for watching. Okay. See ya. Wow. Wow. Bye, everyone.